Sterling Castle has seen blood and gore, but also beauty. Within its ramparts is a Renaissance palace built by a Scottish king for his French queen. It also saw one of man's first attempts at flight. This unlikely episode dates back to 1507, in the reign of Scotland's King James IV. James hired a scientist, John Damien, to try to turn base metal into gold. He had no more success than anyone else who has tried it. John Damien was you know, a bit of a mad scientist. There would be lots of bangs and whizzies and things going on from his laboratories which would depress people to actually think that, that he was actually doing something. Having produced no gold, Damien tried another mad scheme to win the king's approval. He made a huge pair of wings using strips of wood, chicken feathers and glue. In front of the king, the visiting French ambassador and the entire Scottish court. Damien boasted he would fly from Stirling Castle to France. He climbed the castle walls and peered into the long drop. Then he bowed gracefully to the king and his court. He then stood on the wall and he jumped. But for a moment he may have hung in the air like a bird of prey would hang, but then with the grace and dignity of a stone, he then flew straight vertically down. Damien was no more successful at flight than he was at alchemy. But he had a stroke of luck. A soft landing in cesspit sewage at the foot of the castle walls. The only damage, a buckled wing, a broken leg, and hurt pride. He claimed he shouldn't have used chicken feathers, since chickens can't fly more than a few feet. With eagle feathers, he argues, he would have soared to France. John Damien's flight is one of the more bizarre chapters in Sterling Castle's history. But there were many a dark and infamous deed. One of the most villainous in 1452. The Scottish King James II had a red birthmark and was known as Fiery Face. He had a temper to match. Fearing for his throne, he invited his archenemy, the Earl of Douglas, to Stirling Castle for a peace conference. It was anything but. The king's terrible temper was to prove lethal. After eating together, the peace conference turned into a bloodbath. James stabbed the Earl, and the King's followers joined in. The Earl's body, with, with over 20 stab wounds, was, uh, was then taken from the room, thrown out of a window, where it landed in a garden down below. Even by the standards of the time, the King's conduct was widely condemned. The Earl's followers were outraged. They took their revenge by burning Sterling to the ground but James of the Fiery Face had already left. Eight centuries of battles and violent deaths. Many people believe at least one of these deaths spawned a ghost that haunts the castle still. Many say they've seen or heard it. Gary Darcy, the castle's senior steward, was locking up the vaults one day when the lights failed and the staircase was plunged into darkness. I suspected it was somebody playing a trick on me, so I stood at the top of the staircase here and listened to hear for voices so I could find out who it was. I didn't hear any voices, but what I did hear was footsteps coming up the back of me. Now, having checked the tower, I knew that there was nobody down there. As the footsteps approached the back of me, I turned around and there was no one there. The hairs on, on the back of my neck stood up and it just felt, just it just didn't feel right. And it, it, I just had this, this sense and this urge just to, just to leave.
eight centuries of history, of secrets, have stamped their mark on Stirling Castle, one of Britain's greatest fortresses.